Hello again, this is Rob Wagoner, and I wanted to continue our discussion of Azure Site Recovery for your on-premises workloads. Now, I've shown you how to protect your Hyper-V virtual machines. Let me now show you how to protect your VMware virtual machines, and we're going to use the new Azure portal for this. So the first thing we do is move into Recovery Services Vault. The thing I like about the new portal is we've combined our recovery services so you can have a single vault that handles multiple roles and I'll show you that as we go. So the first thing we'll do is create a recovery services vault. Am I gonna put it in a new or existing resource group? We'll put it in a new one. And where do we wanna locate this? So of course we have our choice of anywhere in the world to place this. I'm gonna choose East US and go ahead and say create. So now it's gonna go create the Azure Site Recovery Vault and I'll come back to you when that's done. Okay, so we have the recovery vault created. Now, because it's new, of course, there's nothing here, but what I want to do is point you to the settings. Over here, we have getting started for both backup and site recovery. So what vault can store both your backup data and your site recovery data? But we're going to drill into site recovery and walk through the wizard to get this set up. So the first thing we have to do is to find our protection goal from Azure. We want to replicate our machines to Azure. We could also replicate to a a secondary recovery site and use Azure for the witness and managing that failover. But here we're going to move our replicas right into Azure. And then what machines are we protecting? We're going to protect VMware based virtual machines. So we'll choose that here. Now we have to prepare the source. And this is where we go in and add a configuration server. Now I'm connecting to the Azure portal from what's going to be my process server. This is my configuration and process server. And so it says, make sure this is running server 2012 R2, which it is. Configure proxy URL. So if you have any service URLs that you need to enable through your firewall, download the unified setup and then download the vault registration key. I've already downloaded the unified setup. And so we'll get that started. I'll come back when it comes up. Okay, so the unified setup wizard had started. And the first thing we need to do is, is tell it we're installing a configuration server and process server. If you're protecting a lot of on-premises VMware-based VMs, you may need to add additional process servers to scale out your deployment. But this is our first one, so we'll just choose configuration and process. Accept the third-party licensing agreement for MySQL. It'll confirm you're connected to the internet. And then it runs a couple prerequisites. So if you have a restart pending, you get stop and start over. Make sure your time clock is right and that you have free space. Now on this machine, I have set up this extra one terabyte volume. It requires about 800 gig of extra space for backup and replication. I just allocated a terabyte and moved on. Enter your root password. This is where you confirm that yes, you're protecting VMware based VMs and you have to have the vSphere PowerCLI installed. If you haven't installed this, this will give you an error. It will give you a link where you can go install it and then you can rerun setup again. Now we go into install location. All simple normal stuff, right? My network connection, I only have one network connection on this VM. And then my site recovery registration key. We downloaded this earlier and I'd saved it to the desktop. So here are my vault credentials. Now it's going to go do in the install. This will take a while. So we'll give it time. While we're waiting on this, what I want to do is step back a minute and show you my VMware install. So right now I have one virtual machine installed and that's VMware P1, which is the virtual machine we're running in right now. And when I come back, the installation will be completed. So I'll come back when this is done. So now the install has finished. Now it asks us to restart the VM. We'll keep this passphrase. So we save the passphrase on our desktop. And then it asks you to set up accounts. These accounts are used to log into your Active Directory domain and into your VMware vCenter server. So when we create these accounts, these will be used in Azure, as it says. So you'll see these names later. So this is my VMware account. So I'm creating a, a VMware account for my administrator. And then we add a domain account. So my domain is msts2. And so I've created my MSTS2 domain account as well. And so it'll confirm both of those are added. Now in the blog, I reference the name of this tool in case you need to run this again. So at CSPS config tool, again, it's also in the blog. Vault registration, so you can go back and make any of these changes you need to make. 
and then we'll just say close. And then of course we need to go ahead and reboot this server so we'll go ahead and do the reboot now. Okay and now we're back. I'm in the Azure Site Recovery Vault and what I want to show you is when we go back through this step-by-step -step process now the configuration server. Remember we went to add that and here it is. And then the other thing we add here is our vCenter server as well. So we have to name our vCenter server again, friendly name, and then the address or host name of the vCenter server. I'm just going to go after the IP address because I have it. And then the vSphere or vCenter host account. Remember when we created the two accounts and that's why I named it the VMware because those are my VMware credentials that will let this happen. And so I click OK and it'll go add this vCenter host and the process server configuration. And so we can go right here and view this job in progress if we want. And I'll come back to you when this is done. So now we've added the vCenter server. We show that successful. So now we can move back here. Now we have to prepare the target. This is where we identify where we're going to send all this information. So we have storage accounts and we have virtual network. So one of the heads up here before you build this out yourself the first time, be sure to build storage accounts and virtual networks in the same region you're sending your ASR vault to because they need to be in the same region. And so we'll come back to these in a moment as we go through the replication settings preparation. So the first thing we have to do here is create a replication policy. And so I'm going to name this VMware rep and it's going to move from VMware or physical servers to Azure. Our RPO recovery point objective threshold and then our recovery point retention and then app consistent snapshots. So what this says is every 15 minutes we're going to send replicas. We are going to keep 24 hours worth of replicas. Remember this is DR protection not backup and then how often we're going to have application consistent snapshots. Again take note of the balloon if you specify zero for your time frame of app consistent snapshots that means we won't generate any application consistent snapshots. Then we'll click OK here and this is creating and associating the policy now and it creates a replication policy it also defines a failback replication policy so that if you ever have to fail over into Azure you have a replication policy that will fail you back to on-premises as well. So now that we've created the policy we need to associate the policy so now we associate the configuration server. This is just a, since we only have one, it's just a checkbox here. We had to create the policies and then associate them to our replication policy. That's taking care of that. Okay, so now the jobs have finished, all the associations have occurred, and we can move on to the next step. We have the question here about capacity planning. So we have a capacity planner that will accurately estimate your network bandwidth, storage, and other requirements. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I've downloaded it. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop this first discussion on setting up Azure Site Recovery for VMware. And my next session, I'll actually go into setting up protection for the virtual machines. Thank you for your time, and I'll speak to you soon.